So day one of systems of linear equations, you have here a definition at the top. So for us, the definition that we're going to need for a system of linear equation is two or more two or more linear equations. But for us guys, it's pretty much just going to be two. Oh, so it's already written there, my bad. So you can see here, it's already written, a set of two or more linear equations, each written with the same variable. So you have x and y. Okay, so what we can do is just like, these are all different examples. Okay? So those are three different examples. And the solution, this next bullet, the solution here is a pair of values that satisfy both equations. So you need to find some x comma y, this is on the whiteboard, that satisfies both, both equations. And as you can see on the whiteboard, it's where the two lines cross. It's where the two graphs meet each other. So let's take a look at the first situation. Investigation. Which linear equation relates the masses on these balanced scales? So what do you have on the left side there? You have two x's and a two kilograms. The balance the balance scale symbolizes the equality. And on the right side there, you got 2 plus 12 is, is 14. Okay, and on the second balance, how many x's you got there? Two x's and two y's and a 2 is being balanced by 14. So how are the two equations the same? How are the two different? Well, one of the equations has only x, and the other equation has x and y. They both equal 14. And what do you know about the number of solutions for each equation? Could you have more than one solution? For the top one, no, like x is, is fixed for the top one. So once you find x, then it's fixed, and then y will be fixed. So I, I think there's only one unique solution. One unique solution. So could you solve the first equation? What is x? Yeah, like you can eyeball that one, right? Like, think about this equality. The, do the two greens match up? So take those off the scale. If you take two off the left and take two off the right, in a sense, you're subtracting two. Subtract two, subtract two. Then what do those two x's have to add up to? Or equal. Those two x's have to equal the, the 12. So if you have two x's equaling 12, then x has to be 6. Now, once you know that x is 6, now you have to go substitute this in right here. So 2x's, that's 6 plus 6, so that's 12 there. And then you get 2y plus 14 equals 14. How does that work? <laughs> kind of silly. So what does y have to be? Yeah. 2y plus 14 equals 14. Well, then y has to be, y has to be 0. So this is a kind of a funny example that they have a picture of a block representing 0. That doesn't even make any sense at all. But it gives you a sense of how you have two separate equations, and then there's going to be some x, y that satisfies the conditions. The x, y is when x is 6, y has to be 0. This is the solution, the one unique solution to this setup. 
The other thing it shows is like you have to work with one of them, and then once you figure out some information about that one, then you move it into the second one. And we're going to be doing a lot of that in this unit. All right, let's try this one. These are tough to do at first, but hopefully after a while you get good at them. So we have here a school district that has buses that carry 12 passengers and buses that carry 24 passengers. And the total, the total passenger capacity is 780. And there's 20 more small buses than large buses. So this is, a, this is a handful of things you need to take care of. It's quite challenging. So you have to think two things, two ideas, really. What are the two ideas? There are people, and there are buses. So you're going to have to have an equation that talks about buses, and you're going to have to have an equation that talks about people. So let's, this, this last one, this last sentence is actually not that bad. There are 20 more small buses than large buses. Could you write an equation for that last one? So we need letters. So let's call X the large bus and call Y the small bus. Now how could you relate an equation using X and Y and that 20? There are 20 more small buses than large buses. So there's more small buses, right? So what does y equal? 20 more than the uh, 20 more than the what? Yeah, the large buses. So there's one of the equations. Make sure you're jotting this stuff down. You need a pencil? So that one is not too bad, but the first idea is a little bit harder. Because now we have to think about actual like rate. Like how many people can fit on the large bus and how many people can fit on the small bus. So how many fit on the small? And how many fit on the large? So if you had one large bus, how many people would be there on that bus? If you had two large buses, that'd be and three large buses, that'd be you just keep timesing, right? You keep timesing by the number of people that can fit on one bus. So you have to have these rates. And this relates us to this. Do you remember this equation? That term at least? That's the slope times the number of the independent variable. So mx, that's what we have to use here. So for the first one, if we're counting by 12s, that's the slope. 12, 24, 36. Every time you go over by 1, it goes up by 12. Over by 1, up by 12. So for the large bus, you'd have 24x. And for the small bus, you'd have 12 what? of y. And if you added those two equations up, what are we talking about here? The first equation is about buses. The second equation is about people. So how many people are going? 780. So this is number of buses. This is number of people. And it will always be like this, you guys. There's always two ideas, two equations. Two variables. Always in twos. Two ideas, two equations, two variables. Okay. And then you can guess and check here. Like, what if you had one bus and one... One large and one small, is that going to work? How does it have to relate? 
x and y have to be different by how much? 20. So could you have like 21 and 1? 22 and 2? 23 and 3? But they have to add up to 780. So it's like this first equation gives you a condition, but then that condition also has to meet this second condition. So you always have 20 more buses than the other, but the number of people going is 780. So which, which pair of buses is it going to be? So if you look at the first equation, or I don't know, they want us to solve this yet. Just create. So now in number bullet two, they're giving us the answer. So we're going to have strategies to find the answer ourselves. Like in this case, they're just giving us the answer. You're given the answer. So you look at 35 and 15. Do those differ by 20? Yeah, so small buses is, this is the Y, right? And large buses, this is the X. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see if those satisfy the system. We just have to plug them in. So for the first equation, Y equals 20 plus X, you sub them in. Does 35 equal 20 plus 15? And the answer to that question is yes. Now think about the other side. 780 is supposed to equal 24x plus 12y. So we sub in what we know. 24x's and 12y's. Does that right-hand side equal 780? I sure hope so. 24 times 15 plus 12 times 35. Yeah, it does. Okay, so that one is good too. So that's the solution. Later in the unit, we're going to show you how to do algebra on these two things and solve 35 and 50 on your own. So this is, that's the whole unit. This is the unit. You're given a question, you have to come up with the system, and then you have to solve the system. That's the whole unit in one question. Okay, so we have a flag, uh, Canadian territory, none of it. They're giving us perimeter. They're telling us some relationship with length and width. And then we have to model the situation. OK, so I if, if I had to do this question, I would start with a rectangle. Okay, so here's some rectangle. The length and width are different, even though it kind of looks like a square. It's just a rectangle. They're telling us that the perimeter is 16 feet, and they're telling us its length is 2 feet longer than its width. So if this is length and this is width, what would be the perimeter formula? That's area. Length times width is area. So how you have this is where you have to add up all the sides. So how many L's do you have? And how many W's? So there's the perimeter formula. And what do you know the perimeter is? The perimeter is 16. So there's one equation. 16 equals 2L plus 2W. So that's one of the equations. Now we have to use the second sentence. So it's like we use the first sentence. That's the first, I would call it a condition. The first condition. So we've got an equation for that. Now the second condition says that the length is two feet longer than its width. How would you write that? The length is 
What would you replace? What symbol for is? Yeah, I would put equals. The length L is two feet longer than width. So what are you going to write there? No. Longer. Two plus W. That's the other one. So those are the two equations. This one's equation one. This one's equation two. And that's hard. That's hard to do. It's very difficult at first to set these up on your own, and it takes practice. Okay, so now they're going to give us the answer. So you're given the solution. You just have to verify or satisfy. So another word for satisfy is verify. So now we have to just verify. So they're telling us that the length is 5 and the width is 3. So we just substitute them into both. So 16 equals 2 L's and 2 W's. So we have 10 plus 6. So that one's good. That is the only answer, yep. Sometimes you'll see that there can be no answer, one answer, or actually infinite answers. Um, it then it just becomes like there's a free variable and We'll talk about when it comes, but it's like when the two lines are basically the same. Okay, so satisfying the other one, L is 2 plus W. So substituting in for L, we have 5 equals, oh my gosh, 5 equals 2 plus W. So that one's easy, 5 equals 5. So again, we're not actually solving on our own. We're just verifying at this point. More, we're just trying to explore the idea of building these, building these systems of equations. Do you still need that page? So it's just a check. Yeah, it's just a check. Cool on this slide? All right. Okay, school raised $195 by collecting 3,000 items. The school receives 5 cents for pop cans and 20 cents for plastic bottles. Okay, so again, what are the two ideas here? Good, we got money. And we got bottles or items. Good. So you have like physical things you can hold on to, like a bottle, and then you got money. Okay, so I personally think the items is the easiest to do. Like how many items are there? There's 3,000 items. And there's those 3,000 are split up into how many things? So it's going to... Excuse me, it's going to be cans plus bottles equals 3,000. So let, so let X be number of cans, and let Y be number of bottles. So then you would say X plus Y is 3,000. Now, what are your choices here? Could you have 3,000 cans and zero bottles? Could you have 2,000 cans and 1,000 bottles? You could, right? Could you have 4,000 cans and negative 1,000 bottles? No, you can't have like a negative amount of bottles, right? Unless you're like going to the bottle depot and paying them or something. It's like the reverse situation. Okay, that's the first condition. That's the items. 
So we got that one. Check. The money one's a little bit harder. So like if you had one can, what would that be worth? Uh, one can? Five cents. Two cans? Ten cents. Three cans? Fifteen cents. Four cans? Is this, what is it going up by every time? Five cents. So that's the slope. Do you remember this? So it's some, it's some number times the variable. So for us, it would be 5 cents, right? Which I'm going to write like this. Because eventually I want it to equal the amount of money I'm getting, which is in what? Dollars. So I'm just going to just quickly convert that cents to dollars so it works out. Plus, what's the next one going to be? How much is each bottle worth? 0 0.2. Good. And that, that's the system. This is very, very math 10 level. This question will probably be on your exam. We're not going to solve it right now. We're just going to be given the answer and plug it in and make sure it works. But this whole idea of being able to build these systems, that's a math 10 skill. And what's crazy is like when I teach physics 20, sometimes we use this and it just like pops up randomly. It's like, oh, you need to make a system. And people are like, oh, what? What's a system? It's like math 10, oh. And then especially in your 30 levels, uh, systems will show up. And then when I went to university, actually, I took a whole math course just on systems. It was crazy. But it wasn't just two equations. It would be like seven or eight of them. It was ridiculous. Or five or six, maybe not seven or eight. Well, a couple pieces of paper, about 15 minutes. Yep. Okay, so here's the answer. So 2,700 cans. Let's, let's plug it into the first one. 2,700 cans plus 300 bottles. Does that satisfy 3,000? Yeah, so that one's okay. Check. Now let's satisfy the second one. Five cents for 2,700 cans. And 20 cents for 300 bottles. Hopefully that equals 195. So times and add separately. This is 135. 0.2 times 300, this is 60, and it works. Check. We're just satisfying, that's all we're doing. Verify, check. We're only just checking. How are you guys feeling about this? Seems not too bad? So one more to go. Okay, batteries. So we got packages of eight, and we got packages of four. So I would say let X be the eight the eight pack and let y be the four pack no it doesn't matter okay so we have two ideas we have how many packages and how many actual batteries So we got packs and we got batteries. So like if you had one pack of, of a, if you had one eight pack, how many batteries would you have? Eight. If you had two eight packs, how many batteries you got? So you can see here that this is just a proportion 
It's a proportion. M is your proportion factor. Is it timesing by 2? Well, in this case, it's timesing by 8. Is it timesing by 3? No, in this case, it's timesing by 4. It's whatever the slope is of the line. What is it going up by? If the number of packs goes up by 1, the number of batteries goes up by 8. For the other one, if the number of packs goes up by 1, the number of batteries goes up by 4. Is this is the slope. This is rate of change. So x can change, but m is the proportion. m is the proportionality constant, a.k.a. the slope. Okay, so let's analyze. Total number of batteries was 320. So what's going to equal 320? Total number of batteries. Well, depending on how many x's I have, I have to times them by 8. And depending on how many y's I have, I have to times it by 4. So that's the number of batteries. Check. Now how many packs is there going to be? There's 1.5 times as many packages of 4 batteries as packages of 8 batteries. So how many, which one, which one is there more of? More of the four packs, right? So then what will Y equal? 1.5 times the number of X's. Now we verify. 30 packs of 4. The packs of 4 are the Y's. So 30 equals 1.5 times 20. That looks good. And in the second one, The x is 20, and the y is 30. 160 plus 120. It doesn't look good. Uh-oh. Got 280. Did I screw up? 30 packages of the 4. 20 packages of the 8. Okay, so when I typed up these notes, I think I screwed this up. So this number here is 20. And this number here is 30. Okay, so that's my mistake when I typed up these notes. Okay, so there's 20 packages of the 4 and 30 packages of the 8. So that means when we go up into this, we can just substitute these. These are going to change. So 240 and 80, which is the 320. Alright, thank you for being patient, thank you for helping me with that. Okay, so that's it for the, the notes on the first section. The assignments down here, if you don't have your textbook, please go get it right now so we don't have issues because we have you guys all the way till for quite a long time here.